Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped. So you join me at a place called Foxton Locks near Leicestershire for a really, really cool day, I think. Now, you may well have seen my Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio review that I did recently. If not, I will put a card above. So behind me is the Alfa Romeo Giulia Speciale. Now, I'm really interested to drive this car. So the Giulia is the range-topping, M3-eating, all-out petrol monster. This, I think, is the car that will go up against the bulk of the BMW 3 Series and Mercedes C-Class fleet. This is a 2.2 diesel, so it's got that lovely mix of great performance, but also economy. Um, and I, I'm going to be really interested to see just what, if you like, I might even call it the everyman's Julia, the one that the majority of people are going to kind of look at. See just how good this car is. There are some amazing roads around me today. So we're going to take it out, get it on some nice roads, put it through its paces and just see how it compares with those German rivals. This handsome looking Giulia Speciale is finished in Vesuvio grey and sits on 18 inch 10 spoke turbine alloys. Its 2.2 litre diesel engine produces 180 bhp and 450 newton metres of torque. Zero to 60 is only 7.1 seconds, but the combined cycle is an impressive 67.3 miles per gallon. The smart black leather sports interior gives the cabin a clean and practical feel. The on-the-road price is £35,000, with this example costing £36,400. Now, if you saw my Quadrifoglio review, um, <clears throat> there was a couple of things about that. The first thing, it was filmed in the New Forest, so I was pretty restricted in terms of the kind of roads I had access to. Um, and I got a good feel for the car, but I, I didn't really have the chance to stretch its legs. Now the great thing about where I am today is there are some amazing roads. Oh really, there's a, an absolutely brilliant selection of roads around here. So hopefully um, we can kind of have a bit of a play with this car. I've got some very familiar controls. I've got the, the DNA switch down here and I've, at the moment I've got it set in normal. I'm in just normal automatic mode. Um, and the response of the car is really, really nice. Now, the interesting thing is there's lots of familiarity in here from the Junior. There's the lovely big um, gear changes, which <laughs> if you watch that review, you'll know how much I fell in love with those. Um, there's more normal materials in here. There's less carbon fiber, for obvi obviously, um, but it's still a nice place to be. Now, with this road being so lovely, I have to basically um, put the car into the manual gearbox. So I'm just gonna switch the um, selector to the left I'm now in manual gearbox and we will see um, just how whether or not this gearbox this eight-speed uh, gearbox is just as nice as it is in the Julia in the quadrifolio rather it's a very smooth gear change this is a 2.2 diesel engine it's it's only got only got 180 horsepower <clears throat> so it's it's clearly lacking on the kind of performance stakes compared with the Quadrifoglio and it's not a fair comparison for me to com keep comparing it to that car but it's difficult when that, that's a car I've driven. Uh, gear change is pretty swift um, and uh, uh, smooth and the pull away out of the corners is, is good. Um, it feels nice, it feels kind of responsive. I think the way I would describe the engine is it, it doesn't have a kind of surge it just it just accelerates away it's not the most dynamic feeling engine in the world in terms of accelerative sort of push but it gets the job done and we're rocking along here at a you know a reasonably nice rate of knots um, 
the car certainly has a nice feeling on the road, which I find really, really important. Now, from a, the, the tech in here actually is very, very usable. The, what I would say is the, the cabin just feels a little bit more plain and utilitarian than it did in the Quadrifoglio because that had the materials to kind of bring it to life a little bit. I really like the steering wheel. Um, I just feel that the dash is lacking a little bit of the sort of um, drama that I would expect from an Alpha. The, the seats are very, very comfortable um, and it's a nice place to be. I can imagine you can truck along here and do some good miles in this car. Um, and, and certainly from a rear passenger space, there seems to be plenty of that too. So in normal driving mode then, it's pretty responsive, it certainly gets the job done. Let's make the switch to dynamic. I've got a lovely change of dashboard and, ah, okay, this car just has just come alive basically. It's a completely different feel once you stick it into that dynamic mode. It has far more urgency and actually a really nice feeling to it. So I think your, your kind of normal mode, everyday driving, mooching around town, you want a little bit of fun, stick it into the dynamic mode, and actually, it really does get the job done. That gearbox is very, very good. Lovely poise and balance through the corners. And actually, a pretty good pull out from the corners as well. So I've been driving this car for a while now and what I really, really like about it is the driving feel. So it doesn't matter, I mean, for me, if I, was, if I had this car and it was mine, I'd drive it in D all the time. It's just got that kind of responsiveness that I want from a car. But it doesn't matter whether you're driving it on the paddles or whether you're driving it in the auto box. It, it has a really, really nice responsive feel to it. The steering weight is very, very good. Um, and what I like about this road is there's lots of, uh, it's a nice mix of different types of corners, from long open corners to short tight ones. Um, and it handles them really, really well. Front end grip is very good. Yeah, I'm on the public road, I can't push it too hard, but you know, that balance going into a corner is really, really nice. The brakes are very responsive. They've got a lovely feel to them. So all in all, from a kind of driver's car point of view, th this car really, really is ticking the boxes for me. Um, you know, the, the rear wheel drive balance, it's a lovely dry day today, but you know, it feels very, very planted um, and very sure-footed. And I like that a lot. So I can see that, um, you know, There'll be lots and lots of people, and one of the things I got from the when I did the Quadrifoglio review was loads of BMW and Mercedes fans kind of saying, ah, oh, it's an Alpha, it's never going to be as good as a BMW um, or a Mercedes. Now, you may well make that argument for the top level Quadrifoglio versus M3 or C63. I have to say, though, you get into this car, um, and it's it's got an awful lot of things, an awful lot of attributes that people often associate with BMW. It feels really, really super. Um, and, you know, if you are in that kind of executive um, uh, four-door saloon market and you haven't considered one of these, then I think you probably should. Um, yes, there are a few things in here. I think the cabin's a little bit plain, a little bit ordinary for me. I'd like a little bit more wow, but I'm being really, really picky. The MMI and the sat-nav is very intuitive. It seems really simple to use. I've had a bit of a play with that. The main central display and instrument binnacle, again, is, is it does the job. Um, I've got a nice big rev counter on the left. I've got a nice big odometer on the right and a big digital speedo in the middle it's doing the job. The steering wheel itself is nice, touches like having the start stop button on the steering wheel are nice. Um, yeah, all in all, um, I'm, I'm really, really liking this car to be fair. And when you get a nice bit of open road like this and you kind of want to just push on a little bit, it gives you that confidence and that driver's feel. And I like it a lot, I really, really do.
I'm going to do a slightly different test. I normally do 0 to 60 tests, but in this car, I'm going to do a 60 to 0 because it's got collision uh, awareness. So when you start braking hard, all the emergency lights come on. So I'm at 60 miles an hour now and go. There we go. And that is pretty impressive. I might need to start doing more of those. So you hang the anchors on and this thing stops really quickly but the emergency flashes start coming on to kind of let people know behind that you're braking really hard. One minor little thing about the gear stick or gear lever however you want to call it is I don't know whether it's me just being a bit rubbish but you have to pull a little lever back on the the back of the gear stick to engage drive with your foot on the brake uh, and the same thing for reverse but there's been a couple of times when I've struggled to get it to go from neutral to reverse or neutral to drive. Um, and then the, the electric handbrake, I don't know whether it's meant to disengage automatically or not, but a couple of times I've gone to drive off and it's not disengaged automatically and I've had to do it manually. Now that might just be me being cag handed, but, but that, that's just a, it been a frustrating a couple of times. So what are my final impressions of this car? Well, I'm hugely impressed with it, if I'm honest. I drove the Quadrifoglio and loved that, but then I was expecting to love that. It's right up my street, it's my kind of car, it's got lots of power, lots of performance, it sounds amazing. So stepping into this with it being diesel, I kind of thought it might be a bit disappointing, but it, it really hasn't been. Um, it's got, when you put it in the dynamic setting on the DNA, the, the DNA switch, it has a lovely, lovely sporty response. The feeling of the steering, the, the balance through the corners is very, very impressive. And matched to this eight-speed gearbox, whether you're driving in auto or whether you grab a paddle, it, it really is a very responsive drive. And it kind of gives you that smile on your face that, that, that you maybe don't expect when you're looking at buying a, a, a saloon car. So if you are out there and you're looking at a four-door saloon, you really need to put one of these in in the mix, to be honest, um, especially if you're looking at the normal sort of BMW uh, 3 Series and uh, Mercedes C-Class uh, uh, and, and, and so on. You know, I like the fact that this is a bit different. It's an Alpha, it's got, it, I think it looks great from the outside. This Speciali version, I think looks really nice from the back, nice sort of um, twin exhausts. Inside, it's a very comfortable place to be. I've been driving the car for quite a while now. As I said before, it's maybe not got the drama I would want from an Alpha, but it's very functional and easy to use, which I guess is, is the whole point. So I have a couple of thank yous. Um, I need to say thank you to Alfa Romeo UK for access to the car. Um, the car was organized by the, uh, the Craig TV Car Collective. So a huge thank you to those guys for organizing the event today and inviting me and giving me access to such a great car. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have done so, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. And I will see you on the next film, guys. You take care. Drive safe.